Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and today we are taking a look at the Suku Autumn Winter Collection for 2023. I do have a part one with a few items that were gifted to me in PR, but these items here are ones that I purchased. So this is the remainder of the collection. However, I did, um, I am missing one item from the collection that I guess I will get at a, a later date, but I had ordered number five in the liquid luster eyes and that did not arrive. So we'll look at all of the other ones. We've got swatches of the entire collection and I will leave part one linked down below in the description box. Let's start off with the eyeshadow quads. So this one here is one, two, seven. And let me take a look at this really really beautiful color story one of the great things about this collection is that we have cooler and warmer tone shades kind of mixed into each of the palettes you can see we have this beautiful blue gray it's got some shimmer to it and then we have this soft taupe now this taupe shade it is not a straight up taupe there's a little warmth to it a little rosiness so it's a little bit more of a rosy taupe really really flattering then we have this more like um it's not burgundy but it's like a strawberry burgundy so if you take strawberry and burgundy cross them together you have that shade here and then we have a rosy brown so this is can be your medium depth of brown but instead of being like a reddish brown per se it's actually more of a pinkish brown so i think the palette overall you know these shades go very nicely together. I really like the juxtaposition of the like grays with the pinks because you know they just they look really nice together and we've got kind of some warmer rosier shades versus some cooler grayer shades as well. So I think that's a really nice contrast there. The other quad that I have in uh, part one, this is one to eight. Let's go ahead and swatch this one here as well. And I'm gonna swatch this one down here so we have space for comparison. You can see that this shade here is going to be a grayish green. And then we have a taupe as well, but this one is gonna be a cooler tone taupe. So you can see the difference between the two of those. This one has a bit more gray. It is gonna be a slightly cooler taupe shade. And then we have a, it's gonna be more of like an antique gold and a deep cocoa brown and this actually has the faintest touch of plum in it so these are the two quads 127 and 128 next we're going to take a look at the blush this is 142 and you can see we go over from the deeper matte this is actually your blush all the way to a shimmery highlight so you can sort of customize the level of shimmer that you want here so i'm going to swatch you know the left middle and right here and here is the matte blush shade where they start to kind of mix together and you have kind of that shimmery blush. It's going to be here. You can see it's a little bit warmer there. And then we have this highlight shade, which is a rosy champagne. So really beautiful. So these are those three shades. And then if you mix them all together, this is what we have. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of blend a swatch of this out as well. So this is 142. 143 I have in part one of the video. Let's just go ahead and swatch it. We'll do the same thing here. But in this case, we're going from this like warmer beige all the way to a lilac shade. And I love this. It is such a great kind of everyday blush. And then that highlight, you know, I love kind of those lavender tones to it. And let's go ahead. That's all of it mixed together. Let's just kind of spread that out. We'll put that right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the eye primer and the liquid luster eyes. So this is our eye primer. You can see we have a flexible doe foot. This is going to be clear. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it right here. And you can see that this is going to be a translucent eye primer. It's moisturizing, very thin. You can blend that out. And um, yeah, we'll talk about more of that in a minute. Let's take a look at the Liquid Luster Eyes. And um, we're gonna go numerically. So this one here is shade number one. 
and you can see we have kind of this berry rose shimmer and there is going to be some silver sparkle in here this one here is number two you can see our doe foot is going to be an angled doe foot and you can see this one is a golden brown so we definitely have some golden hues to it there is a touch of orange in here and this one does not really have the glitter that you see in number one so number one you can see that glitter number two definitely has shine and sheen but you don't see any glitter particles number three is my favorite this is going to be our cooler taupe and look at that really beautiful shade this is going to be a soft fawn brown with a touch of a mauvey gray in there and again just like number two this one doesn't have any glitter particles in it either and here is number four and you can see that number four is going to be a warmer brown but it's a pretty neutral brown it's not going to be truly warm this is going to be cool neutral number five is going to be warmer in tone i don't have that but you can see this is going to be a bit more of a muddy brown we do have a little bit of kind of this there's a little bit of gray in there giving you you know a bit more of a muddy color to it and then so those are all permanent one through five are permanent then we have two limited editions for this collection this one here is 101 and you can see this is going to be a charcoal gray this is going to be glittery you can see it shears out and this one is going to have some glitter particles now there aren't as many glitter particles as number one number one's definitely more sparkly but you do see some in there and uh yeah really beautiful it's not going to be a super cool gray it's a little it has a touch of brown in it and that warms it up a little bit so it's still going to be slightly cool in tone but it is not going to be a super cool tone gray this one here is 102 which is also limited edition now I don't notice any actual glitter particles in this one, but you can see that this is kind of an orangey coppery shade. And it definitely is high shine. It is pretty similar to a liquid version of this orangey antique gold that we have in the 128 quad. So you can see that these colors really go well together. Number one goes nicely with this shade from the 127 quad. The 101 is a nice mix for both of these grays, but it's a little bit closer in tone to the one in uh, the 127 quad. But you can see how well everything goes here. And let's go ahead and take a look at the lipsticks and then we'll move on to details and demos. So for this collection, Suku launched three new limited edition uh, moisture rich lipsticks. This is probably my favorite formula from Suku. It is like the Chantecaille Lip Cheeks. So you have kind of that moisturizing, uh, glossy texture to the lips. This one here is 126 and you can see it's a beautiful mid-tone rose. And there is a touch of coolness to this. A lot of roses that we've seen have too much red, too much warmth. This one has a touch of coolness, making it kind of your perfect mid-tone rose, in my opinion. And then we go on to 127. And I have a mix of 127 and 128 on my lips right now. 127 is going to be a reddish cocoa shade. So we've got a touch of like this rich cocoa mixed into this deeper reddish rose there. I think it's a really beautiful color, great for fall. And then 128, this one has shimmer. So you can see straight up in the bullet, you can see that golden shimmer there. So this one will have some glitter particles in it. And this is gonna be more of a light peach with a golden shimmer. I think all three of these shades are gorgeous. I'm really glad that I picked up all three of these. I love the formulas of these personally. If you love the Chantecaille Lip Sheets, but you don't love the fragrance, check out the Suku Moisturish Lipsticks. There is no scent. They're hydrating. They're moisturizing. They're comfortable. They're glossy. You know, they are the perfect version, in my opinion, of this style of lipstick. So let's go ahead and move on to details and demos. 
Let's start off with the eye primer and the Suku Eye Enhancing Primer. This is a new permanent product. And according to Suku, it says to bring out the best of your eye makeup, Suku is launching a new eye enhancing primer. This wonder in a bottle maintains texture, improves color saturation, and reduces creasing while keeping a long lasting fresh finish. Formulated with ingredients such as sodium hyaluronate, jojoba seed oil, and squalane, this clear colored eye primer contains a glossy oil for a beautiful lustrous glow, creating the perfect base for any eye look. What's more, the non-pearly formula goes well with a glowing or matte eyeshadow. So I've been using this for a few days now and I think it's a great eye primer. It definitely, you know, performs well. It gives me longevity. I think, you know, it gives us, a, a, you know, I would agree with the way that they phrased this. You know, it's not going to give you a completely matte look on the eye. It's not going to give you a true sheen. It kind of gives you a little bit of a satin effect, like a satin matte. So if you were to put this primer on and just sort of leave that on your eye or just put eyeshadow over part of it, you know, you have just a little tiny bit of light reflection there that makes things look slightly better. I would find, I personally find this to be a hydrating eye primer. I find it comfortable. I like to put this on with the wand, use my finger or a brush to kind of smooth it out. And then I let that sit for a minute and then I put some powder or like a eyeshadow base color on top of it just to kind of, you know, make sure that there is no like tackiness or anything. Honestly, it feels very smooth in texture, it has a little bit of a silicone texture to it. And I think this is a really great eye primer. So I will have, you know, an update on this later. I've been testing this out, but I will have like some wear tests with and without this, you know, one eye with the primer, one eye without, so you can see the difference. So I will do that in a future video. Now, moving on to the eyeshadow palettes, the signature color eyes, you know, I love the Suku eyeshadow palettes. I end up, I think I purchased all or almost all of these since they've gone to this formula and they are, these are gorgeous. So let's take a look at 127. 128, I have the eye swatches here to share with you so you can see how those compare, but all details and comparisons for 128 are in part one. So definitely check the description box for that video if you're interested. 127 is called Casa. It's ruby red crossed with blue gray. That's how they are describing this. And it says, applying a gradation from pink to red and topping up with blue gray, this palette guarantees alluring eyes created with a complex fusion of radiance and depth accentuate it by particles of pearl. So I think it's just a really beautiful palette. I don't love pink eyeshadows typically. Suku is sort of an exception for me because their pink and red formulas, they don't, for some reason, they don't make my eyes look as ill as certain reds and so forth can. I feel like the pinks and reds with Suku I can use, whereas with most brands, I, I look sick when I wear them. Honestly, I purchased this quad because not only is it beautiful to look at, but you know, the two main colors I was really attracted to in this palette are the top two, that blue gray and that taupe, that taupe base shade. It is a warmer tone taupe, very, very soft. It is just such a great base shade for me. And this blue gray, you know, it's got enough color. You can use it on its own or you can pat it on for just a soft shimmer effect. I just think it is stunning. And those are like two very versatile shades. I have to say the pink one I like, I think it's really nice. I probably won't use that pink shade quite so often though, just because it's not really my color, but that brownish red is stunning. So, you know, you've got a little bit of pink in there, a little bit of, you know, this cocoa shade in there. And I think it really is a great accent color if you're looking to do some more like rosy nudes and so forth. This is still staying in that neutral palette with just a touch of pink and rose to it. So I think it's a really beautiful palette. Overall, the formula is fantastic as always from Suku. And I just, you can't really go wrong. <laughs> Moving on to the Suku Pure Color Blush, I bought the uh, blush in 142 
and I think is gorgeous. So 143, that was gifted to me in PR. I have that in part one. You can check that out and I've used different brushes with that so you can see the impact. But here in these cheek swatches, I wanted to show you how 142 can be built up. This is still using a soft padding motion. This is about how deep you can get it. Now the pure color blushes in general, if you're not familiar with them, they are meant to be a lighter wash of color, you know, kind of a soft watercolor effect on your cheek. And most pure color blushes are gonna go from a matte blush to a shimmery highlight, and you can kind of mix those up however you, you choose. So in this case, this one here has these beautiful rose tones, and according to Suku, it says, the blush and highlighting colors contain red pearl, enhancing the complexion with a lively glow whilst quickly melting into the skin to give the cheeks a natural flush look that is mature and sexy. And I just think it is absolutely a gorgeous everyday rose shade. So we've got, I would say this is neutral leaning warm. So, you know, it's definitely not gonna be a cool pink, but it's not really an overly warm pink either. It's pretty neutral. The highlight actually leans a bit warmer. So if you wanna warm it up, mixing it with the highlight and having a shimmery blush is gonna warm that up a little bit more. And again, pure color blushes, these are fantastic. I still can't wait to see what they are gonna replace the melting color blushes with, but very excited to see that as well. This formula though has been a favorite of mine for years. It's really just great for an everyday soft blush. Now looking at the liquid luster eyes, this is going to be a new permanent item from Suku and there are five permanent shades, one through five, and then all of your limited edition shades are always gonna be over 100. So 101 and 102 are limited edition for this collection. And according to Suku, we have the playful pearly shimmers are designed to match the base skin color for a beautiful shiny finish within one stroke. Infused with ingredients such as jojoba seed oil and squalane, this oil-based liquid eyeshadow spreads effortlessly over the eyelids with ease. And we have a rich range of colors and radiance that have been added to Suku's core range. Now, I have shades one through four and the two limited editions here. Again, my number five, I did order that, but it was missing from my order. So I'll take care of that and get that in at a later date. But as for these liquid lesser eyes, I think these are a nice product. They are not a favorite of mine from Suku, but what I like to do with these is kind of put these all over the lid, buff them out so you're getting kind of a sheer wash of color. And I think they were great for like highlighting or to tap things over them. You can also put these on top of powder eyeshadow and just kind of dab it on for a little bit of luster. If you're using these on their own for an eye look, you will get creasing. As it mentioned, it is kind of oil-based, so it will kind of crease a little bit throughout the day. It doesn't crease as quickly as I expected it to, but it does crease if you mix it in with an eye primer or something like Duraline, that will improve it a little bit. But again, this is not gonna be a crease-proof product. And that's not really how it's designed to be. So, you know, it fits its description very well, but I personally prefer ones that don't crease. However, I ended up, after trying the one from PR, I did end up purchasing them all because I still like them, you know, enough for, you know, purchasing more shades. I really like how you get kind of that luster, you know, using it buffed out. I love that little bit of sheen, it's subtle, it's, you know, it, it just gives you a nice enhancement without being too shiny or glittery. Again, the one that's really gonna be shimmery is number one. That one is definitely going to be shimmery. The others are not really going to be as glittery. 102, you know, it's a, no real glitter chunks, but it is a little, it appears to be a little glittery, a little shimmery, and so does 101 but these all have kind of a pearlescent effect to them. But again, if you're looking for actual glitter, look at number one. And then moving on to the Moisture Rich Lipsticks. As I mentioned, this, this is one of my favorite lipstick formulas. They are fantastic. You know, I personally prefer these over the Chantecaille Lip Sheiks, which are also fantastic. Um, but these don't have a scent like the Lip Sheiks do. 
and I do find them to be just slightly more moisturizing. They both have kind of that balmy, glossy effect on the lips. They're a lipstick, lip gloss, lip balm combination. So both brands are like that. And so, you know, they're both great options. But the Suku ones in particular, these shades, I have to say I really love all three of these shades. If I had to pick one, it'd be one, two, six. The rose, you know, I love rose colored lipsticks. And I love how this one still has a touch you know, of a cooler rose to it, just a hint. So it's still pretty neutral, but it, it does lean slightly cool. And I would say that 127, you know, has a little bit of warmth to it, but it's pretty neutral as well. And 128 leans slightly warm. It is gonna be a soft peach. This one is definitely much more sheer. It's the one that has a golden shimmer and it works great as a topper as well. So what I have on right now, I have, a blotted down base of the 127 and then the 128 kind of mixed on top of that. And I think these are comfortable and just a beautiful formula. Let's move on to a few comparisons for the eyeshadow. I have to say, when I first saw pictures of the 127 quad, I really thought I had one like that from Suku in the past, but I actually don't. I went through all of mine and I don't have one that matches its description, but let's take a look and see what we can find from some other ones. This here's number 11. This is a permanent quad. It is one of my favorites. So I want I'm gonna put this one vertically so you can kind of see how the colors compare, but you can see we have kind of a shimmery shade. It's a little bit lighter than this taupe, but it is similar. And this is going to be a little bit lighter and less gray. It's a little more blue uh, than the uh, shade in the 127. This is gonna be a bit more plum. And then our last shade here is gonna be a deeper, cooler tone, cocoa brown. But you can see we do still have a fairly similar color story. You know, the hues are a little different, but it is another option. And again, this one is permanent in palette number 11. I also wanted to look at this one, which was limited edition a few times ago. This is number 120. We're gonna skip the white, but let's go ahead and take a look at these other three shades. And let's go ahead and put those right here. You can see that's a bit more orangey, that brown is a bit more of a tannish beige, and then this pink is gonna be more vibrant. It's definitely more, it, it's a little bit more pink. It's a little bit cooler in tone but it definitely is similar. There is a touch more red in this one, but they're pretty close. And then I also want to take a look at this. This is number four, which is a permanent palette from Suku. Again, we're gonna skip kind of that ivory shade that is a glitter topper. This is not going to be quite a similar color story, but I did want to show you how similar these rosy shades are with this palette. Again, though, the closest is gonna be number 11. So we have 11, 120, and number four. These two, 11 and four, are permanent. The rest are limited edition. And after going through all of my blushes, this one here, a 142, this is the melting color blush or melting powder blush in shade 10. So this formula has been discontinued, but it is my closest blush match. So I want to go ahead and share that with you. So here's number 10. Let's go ahead and put that here. And you can see that number 10 is a little bit cooler in tone than this one. But, you know, I do think that they are, it's a, the new one here in 142 is a good substitute for number 10. Now, moving on to the liquid luster eyes. I don't have any comparisons, but I did want to show you after this has been sitting on my arm for a bit. I just want to show you how, you know, it's still a little bit movable. It's not going to smear and smudge. You know, that really doesn't happen. If you touch it, yes, you can still transfer it a little bit. If it does crease, you can tap it out. But it actually stays put fairly well. So, you know, I think overall it's a really nice product. And the texture feels very similar to the eye primer. They're both very kind of smooth and silky, moisturizing feeling on the lid. So you can use these as an eye primer. It's not quite as effective as an eye primer, um, but I think you know it, if you have like dry eyelids and so forth, it can be a bit moisturizing on them. So I know after doing all of the eye swatches and things like that, putting a base of that on really does help my eyes feel just a little bit better. So that's what I really like about these. Again, my favorite is going to be number three right here in the middle. And then the eye primer, I mean, after it has dried, 
it just feels like a very thin layer of, you know, it feels like there's a little bit of silicone there and you can't really feel it. You can't see it. I see no demarcation on my hand, you know, where that is. There is a little bit of blurring. I'm not even sure if you can tell on camera. So it does blur ever so slightly, but it's definitely not going to be a major feature of this eye primer. But so far, I'm really enjoying it. I'll be using it more. And again, I will feature that again in a later update video with that. And I just want to take a look at a few of the Sisley Fido Rouge Shine Lipsticks. This one here is number 12, Sheer Coco. Wanted to show you how that compares to number 127. You can see that they are close. There's a little bit more red in this, the Sisley, but uh, you know, it's a pretty close color match. This is number 24, Sheer Peony. Oh, that's much brighter actually. I thought that was gonna be more muted, but it's much, much brighter than the Suku. Let's take a look at 20, Sheer Petal. Mm, nope, can you see that, that pink? That is gonna be definitely warmer in tone and a little bit more bubblegum. And this is 21, Sheer Rosewood. Let's see, we'll squeeze that right here. And that's gonna be my closest of them. Let me go ahead, I'm gonna put this right here as well so you can see that, that's gonna be my closest. But you can see it's a little bit lighter, a little bit warmer than 126. Now, the Sicily Fido Rouge Shine Lipsticks also have a vanilla scent like the Chantecaille. They're another formula very similar to the Chantecaille Lip Cheeks. I do find them to be a bit more moisturizing. So I've actually been kind of purging my Chantecaille Lip Cheeks in favor of the Sicily and the Suku. This is the Sicily in 32 Sheer Ginger. And I don't actually have something to match shade 128 but you can see this is gonna be deeper, more of a true peach. It has a little bit of brown in there as well. Does not have the shimmer that you have in the Suku. And those are gonna be my comparisons. I hope this was helpful. Again, I'll leave the video for part one linked down below. And you know, Suku Anniversary Collection is coming up very soon. We have a new foundation and powder coming out from them. From the promo photos, the powder did look like it was gonna be purple, but it's actually gonna be pink. And, you know, I think it's gonna be the color of the smooth matte loose powder. I'm not sure of that. I haven't seen that in person, but I did see a description of the powder. You can kind of look this up on the Suku website and they'll tell you what their new products are, but it is described as a, a pink, a rose. So it's not going to be lavender like I was thinking, but I'm definitely curious to try it as a new formula. They have a new foundation coming out called The Foundation. And then we have the anniversary collection coming out right around the same time with some special palettes. This is their 20th anniversary. I think they've been doing a phenomenal job this year. Actually, their summer collection is, I don't see how it's not gonna make it into my 2023 favorites. It is that good. So uh, this one I think has been a really great collection as well. Definitely, you know, I have some more like everyday staple items in here and you know, I, I just, I can't say enough good things. Suku is definitely one of my favorite brands, if not my favorite. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please let me know your thoughts on this collection if you picked up any of these items and I'll see you very soon. Have a great day.